Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are 10 quick and easy ways to customize the look of your Mac. So there are lots of different ways to customize how your Mac looks. I'm gonna focus here on some that don't take much time or effort at all. So first, the most obvious way to customize your Mac is to change your desktop wallpaper. That's the huge graphic that you see behind everything. If you go to system settings and then look for wallpaper, you could easily change this. You've got Apple's dynamic wallpapers and you've got ton of these aerial views here. But if you scroll down, you could also just change your desktop background to a color like this, or even just make it black to really kind of have no background at all. You can also choose your own picture, either from the favorites in your photos app, from pictures in your pictures folder, or you can add any one you want. For instance, I'll just drag and drop this image here from the finder into the box at the top. And you can see how it will use that as my desktop wallpaper now. You can set how it fills the space. If you're good with graphics, you can just create any image you like, like an illustration or take a photo of something specific and then use that as your desktop wallpaper. Now you can have more than just wallpaper back here. If you control click, two finger click or right click on the wallpaper, you will get the ability to edit widgets and you can add a variety of different widgets. For instance, you could add a clock. You could add a look at the batteries for your devices. You could add summaries from news and notes. You could even add your own photos, selecting a specific album and putting it there. So you could put photos of your loved ones right here on your desktop. You can move these around and position them as you like. There are also some settings for this in system settings and then desktop and dock and then scroll down to widgets. You can have the style be monochrome, full color, and you can even use widgets from your iPhone, ones that aren't normally available on the Mac. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You could read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. Now, another thing you may see all the time is the screensaver, and you can customize that. If you go into system settings and then go to screensaver, you're gonna get all these default Mac OS screensavers, and you're gonna get those same aerial views. But you also have a lot of old school things here under other. For instance, you can choose photos and then choose an album from your photos library or a folder full of photos. Once you choose an album, you could set how it looks. So you have a variety of different ways that the slideshow that is now your screensaver will present itself. You also could choose some old school screensavers like this one here, and you can see a little preview. You can have the hello one, all sorts of different patterns and things. You can even set up a message to just be displayed on the desktop. You can even use emoji characters there. You can have album artwork from your music library and word of the day as well. Now notice how in apps, each app seems to have its own accent color. For instance, here in notes, it's yellow. In numbers, it's green. And in pages, it's orange. You can customize that. If you go to system settings and then go to appearance, you've got accent color here. Multicolor means that each app gets to use its own default color. But if you choose one of these other ones, that will be used in all apps. So for instance, if I were to choose purple right here, and you can see now that settings is now using purple. In addition, so is notes, so is pages, and so is numbers. And while we're here, note that you can control the sidebar icon size. Look here in system settings and see what happens when I change to large. It also changes in notes and in other apps as well. Now, there's probably no easier way to change the look of your Mac than simply switching on dark mode. It's just a switch and it really changes everything. So go to control center here and then look for display. Click on the little arrow here and it gives you all the display options. There's a button for dark mode, click that, and now you're in dark mode. You can see how dramatically everything has changed. Now I wanna throw one in here that's not about how your Mac looks, but how it sounds. If you go to system settings and then go to sound, you've got your alert sound, and you'll see a list here of sounds you can choose from. So you can just choose a different one of these but you can also use any sound you want by putting a sound file in the right place. In the finder, choose go and hold down the option key and you get library. Now go and look for sounds and go into 
that folder. And there's nothing there right now. But if you drag AIFF files to this, it will add to the list of alert sounds. So I've just added two files here. Now I have to quit system settings and go back in again and then choose sound. And now I should see them here. Note, I'm only gonna see one, my beep. I don't see that bell sound here. That's because it's the wrong format. So make sure you use AIFF files, not MP3s, M4As, or something else. Another thing that's pretty prominent on your Mac screen is the dock here at the bottom. You can customize the dock in a number of ways. Go into system settings, go to desktop and dock. And right here at the top, you can change the size of the dock. You could turn on the magnification feature, which is this. You can position it on the right or left side of the screen to look really different. I like to turn on automatically hide and show the dock so that it disappears until I move my pointer down to the bottom. And of course, you can customize what's here by clicking and dragging to rearrange the items, drag up to remove items, and go into your applications folder and drag and drop new items into the dock to make it your own. Another thing you see all the time is the pointer, this little arrow here in the middle. If you go into system settings, you can customize this. So you have to go to accessibility and then display. You can make the pointer larger if you want. You could also change the outline color. So I'll make it a black outline and I'll change the fill to a red like that to make my pointer kind of unique. You also may spend a lot of time looking at finder windows and you can change how these look. Of course, you have the ability to view as icons, lists, columns, or gallery. And these settings, as well as most Finder settings, are on a per folder basis. So I'm changing how the Documents folder looks now. Each folder has its own set. But in addition to those basics there, you can go to View and then Show View Options or Command J. And you've got a lot of controls here. I can make the icons bigger, for instance. I could change the text size as well. If I switch to another view type, like icons, you can see all of the view options change. I can now change the icon size, grid spacing. I could have the labels positioned to the right instead of on the bottom. I could even set a background color or picture for icon view. This is only for icon view, but it certainly can create a different look for a folder. Now I should also mention you can customize folder and file icons. It's not something I would consider to be an easy change, but if I don't talk about it here, people will mention it in the comments. So all you need is some sort of graphic that you wanna use as a folder. You wanna open that up in an image app like Preview here, so you can do Command A to select all and Command C to copy the graphic inside the file, not the file itself. Then simply select something like a folder here, do Command I for get info, select the folder icon like that, and Command V to paste, and you can see it reflected there in the finder. To get rid of it, just select the icon again in the info window and press the delete key. And here's another super easy change because it's just a setting, but I think it creates a really dramatically different look for your Mac. Go into system settings and then go to accessibility, go to display, and then look for increased contrast. It changes how things look, it has more defined borders, the menu bar and windows aren't see-through anymore, so they don't get tinted by the colors behind it. I think it creates a pretty cool look that a lot of people really like. It's a little retro. Now here's a bonus one that doesn't affect your entire Mac, just one app, Safari. But a lot of us spend a lot of time in Safari. When we create a new window or new tab, we often end up looking at the start page like this. There's an edit button at the bottom right corner of the start page. And not only can you change what appears on the start page, but you could add a background image. It may be that you see this background image more than you see the wallpaper. So turn that on and then you can click on the plus button here and select your own background image. So I'll go and select one of my images here, choose, and now I'll see this as kind of a wallpaper for Safari. So there are a bunch of quick and easy ways to customize how your Mac looks. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.